Oh, hi. Name's Logan Bennett. Now, I'm going to talk to you about cordage, specifically Hawaiian cordage. It's something that people used to make all the time, but we don't really make it that often anymore. And that's a darn shame. Now, I'm going to teach you how to make cordage with help from my Kumu Lisa, and hopefully we'll get you going on that cordage tutorial right now. So when selecting the, uh, the how for uh, making cordage, I like to uh, um, select pieces that are about the, the minimum size, the width of a broomstick, and the maximum size would be about the diameter of a baseball bat. So this one, you could actually do a, a piece that was a little bit larger than this. If you get any smaller uh, than this size, there's just not a lot of fiber in there. And if you get larger than that baseball bat, um, diameter, then it gets to be a little bit woody so and can be hard to strip. So I like my lengths to be uh, four or five feet long, even up to seven feet, um, and, and unbranched um, and with no uh, blemishes on it. So I always start at the base uh, of the uh, branch and I cut uh, through the outer bark and then I'll uh, put my fingers in here and I'll just pull back. And I ideally like to take it off in one piece. Okay. Once I've removed it from the branch, I will roll this up uh, inside out. Flatten it. Squish. Then I'll put it in a in a container, a bucket of water, even a large trash can, and uh, uh, submerge it in water. You want to do this immediately so that uh, it, it'll oxidize very quickly. You can see it's starting to brown, and uh, we want to get this into the water right away. You're going to use fresh water, not salt water, because the salt water will um, make the fibers very uh, tough and hard to um, twine. So um, I usually use a stone that, uh, to weight this down. As it starts to ret, it'll form a lot of bubbles and it will float up to the surface and be exposed. You want to keep this um, completely underwater um, for three to four weeks until um, it is completely softened. And what that will look like is this. And you'll see all of those uh, layers now um, have loosened up and you can wash this off and separate the fibers out. It's like little ribbons and you'll see layers and layers of, of fibers. And it has uh, quite a strong odor at this point, but once it's um, cleaned and dried, then the odor goes away and you're left with your material to uh, make cola with. When you are uh, selecting um, your the piece that you're going to make a uh, um, piece of cordage out of, um, I'm going to cut this down. You want to make sure that uh, the piece is uh, has the same volume on both sides. You don't want a thicker piece on one side and a thinner piece on the other. You want them both to be the um, the same width. Uh, otherwise, when the uh, cordage spins together and it's very uneven. So to begin with, I usually just um, uh, dip it in water and uh, clean off that extra water just to soften the fibers and it, it helps to um, make it a little, a little bit more pliable. So uh, in this piece, I'm going to uh, start, I'm gonna hold it even. <clears throat> and holding it in my left hand because I'm uh, right-handed. And I'll put it up on my thigh here. Uh, you can give, give it a little twist to get it started. We have uh, these flat ribbons and we, we need to roll them. So we're gonna, uh, sometimes if they're a little wide, we can kind of roll them up just a little bit. So I start high on my uh, thigh. I uh, put these in a V shape here 
I leave myself a little window that I can uh, I can see what's what's going on, and I just work a few inches at a time. And I place my fingers uh, on here, and I'm going to press down and roll. And sometimes it goes all the way down to my palm. And I've now um, uh, created a lot of tension uh, in this side because they're all bound together. Now I'm going to let this left hand go, and you'll see that tension releases. Uh, and binds those two pieces together. And then I can take that back up, make my little V here, and roll, and then let go. <clears throat> now what you don't want to do is to let these two uh, tail here, you know, bind together like that. They need to roll separately, and then tension needs to be released together, so that. <clears throat> And if one side rolls and the other one doesn't, just go back and do it again. So, uh, once your cordage is complete, you can roll it very tightly in one direction and uh, rub your fingers back and forth on it. And then if there's any uneven tension, that will redistribute that tension. So now I'm getting down to the end of this and I need to add on another section. I'm gonna add a little bit more here. Now when you're adding on your new piece, you want to make sure that uh, the volume of the second piece is going to be the same as, as the side. So I'm going to exaggerate this just a little bit, but I'm going to place my new one on top of the short, shortened old piece and twist it. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it over and twist these together. So it's just a little U now in here. And then I'm going to roll this and combine the two together. And you'll notice that, uh, you know, where the little ends are, these little tabs will stick out. So you're just going to go back and, and trim those off with the, with the scissors. And then you can just keep extending it as long as you need it to be. So this is a, a, a two-ply cord, but I uh, want to uh, double this back on itself to make a four-ply or double-ply. So I'm going to do it the same, technically the same way I did it originally, but if I was to uh, roll this down like I did the first time, it actually unravels. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to go backwards. So I'm going to bring it up and then let it go and bring it up and let it go. And then once you've got it done, then you're going to give it a good twist and let those two sides lock together. And you'll see that's quite a, a, a pretty pattern on this one. So if you're going to make a necklace or something longer, you, you need to make it a little longer than double the size of your finished uh, piece. But a three-ply uh, cord, I use two pieces. And I have this one uh, folded over again. I've offset it, so if I need to add in, I can do that. And then I'll take uh, my second piece and I'll... Again, the volume of these should all be this, uh, the same, not uh, thick and thin, but all the same. So I'm twining that together, and this one, and this one. So now I have three plies. And then I'm going to take this and put this on my leg. And again, this is similar to the two ply, but you just have to do three at a time, so it's a little trickier. So you're going to. And if it doesn't work, you can always take it back and do it again. Okay. Oops. So, when this is finished, again, you're going to cut off those little end pieces, but if you compare it to the two-ply, the, uh, it's just a little bit tighter. <clears throat> well, cordage, we used it for a lot of things back then, building houses, you know, the lashing that held it together, canoe lashing even. Without that, we wouldn't have canoes, and without canoes, Hawaiians wouldn't have settled these islands. And you know, carrying things from place to place, even like the 
the main menial task of that. The islands provided many materials for different types of cordage of different strengths and varieties. And I think, you know, the knowledge of being able to make cordage can really benefit someone.